Lissy and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the world's two most cursed dolls. His name is Robert the Doll. Zach Baggins confronted the real life Annabelle doll. So when it comes to haunted objects, you think of Annabelle. And short story short, I may or may not have a real life-sized Annabelle doll. <laughs> Fun fact, I've actually covered Annabelle and Robert the Doll in videos before, but you guys know I cover a ton of scary, weird, nostalgic, creepy toys, all sorts of stuff on this channel, and you guys seem to have enjoyed Annabelle and Robert so much that you guys have been begging for more, so I will deliver today, okay? Grab some popcorn, grab a snack, because the tea is hot. Right, Annabelle? <laughs> She might curse you guys, so drop a like if you guys don't want to get cursed by the real Annabelle and hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Another thing I want to mention is that it's very strange to me how objects or things get cursed. I always think about that, like what makes an object, you know, start off haunted and get bad enough to the point where it's one of the world's top two most haunted dolls or most haunted items in the entire world. And I think in our life we've all almost experienced something that was a little bit supernatural or paranormal. At least I think we've all experienced something Something that's almost a little bit unexplainable comment down below do you guys believe in ghosts yes or no I'm interested in hearing why you guys do or don't but I think after I tell these stories today a lot of you guys might change your mind if you said no so starting off with Robert the doll it's actually pretty funny but Robert the doll did inspire child's play which is Chucky the doll if you guys did not know about that Robert is a unique doll who was first owned and named by a painter from Florida named Robert Eugene Otto so if you guys are trying to find a Robert the doll and like a Toys R Us or something, trust me, you're not gonna find him. According to a legend, Robert the doll was given as a gift in 1903 to the young Eugene. The gift came from a woman who was a servant for Eugene's family, and this woman was sadly apparently abused and thus used the art of voodoo to get her revenge on this family. Wearing an American naval officer costume and holding a small stuffed lion, Robert initially looks rather innocent. At least from the outside, he looks like a typical sailor doll. Nothing too scary. But looking closely, Robert Robert carries a quiet wrath and his history suggests that he could most certainly be a voodoo doll of some extent, believe it or not. Even though from the outside, he doesn't really look like a typical, you know, a bad doll of any sort. Eugene quickly became infatuated with Robert, even giving him his own first name and talking about Robert the doll in first person as if this doll was actually alive. And this, ladies and gentlemen, as we should have expected, is where things started to go wrong. Strange things such as furniture being knocked over, ripped up toys, etc. started happening to Eugene. Eugene was always found terrified in his room claiming that Robert did it and people around him would be like no you're just crazy when Eugene would blame Robert for all the things going on around the house. Neighbors and friends of the Otto family also reported eventually that Robert possessed supernatural qualities. It was told that when the Otto family was absent Robert would sometimes blink, laugh, or even roam about the house when no one else was there which I find to be absolutely horrifying. Imagine Robert the doll just walking into kitchen to make a sandwich? Yeah, no, that ain't happening. Often Eugene's parents heard blood-curdling cries from Eugene's room, and when they checked on their son, his faithful doll Robert was always in Eugene's bed, just sitting there with a blank emotion on his face. One day, Eugene's aunt, who was living with them at the time, suggested that Robert be locked up in their attic because he was becoming too dangerous. And that very night that she suggested to lock up Robert, that aunt died. Literally the same night she made that suggestion. Like, what? That is horrifying. While there was no proof that Robert was responsible, the Ottos decided to appease the doll by bringing him back to stay in Eugene's room. However, many, many years after Eugene grew older, he actually got the doll back from his parents again. He actually ended up inheriting his childhood house from his parents and thus was reunited with his old friend Robert. Eugene resorted to his old behavior, carrying Robert around with him and giving him a place at the dinner table each and every night. When Eugene eventually passed, the house was purchased by Myrtle. As a result, Myrtle also acquired the old haunted Robert. Robert. And apparently his strange behavior never ceased down and continued to happen. They would hear footsteps and laughing from Robert's room, and Myrtle's daughter expresses that when she was young, she was viciously haunted by Robert the doll. Because I've heard a lot of stories about how like ghosts or spirits or demons, which is really creepy, whatever you believe in, do go for younger kids because it's a little bit less believable when a little kid's like, oh, I saw Slender Man standing above my bed or, you know, a monster in my closet because it's you know, it doesn't sound believable. The daughter even claimed that Robert the doll attempted to try to attack her, which is 
horrifying, that poor little child. So you guys might be wondering, where is Robert the doll now? Oh well, he's actually locked up in a cage, as he should be, as I'd say. After experiencing enough of Robert's tears, Myrtle donated him to the Key West Fort East Martello Museum in 1994. Now anyone can actually give Robert a visit and see the haunted doll for themselves face front. There are rumors though, however, if the visitors disrespect him by forgetting to ask him permission before snapping a picture of him, he will actively put a curse on you. And this is apparently very true because there's been a lot of visitors that went to this Key West Museum, took a photo of Robert without his consent, mocked him, left, and had horrible curses on them that were so bad that they actually had to go back to Robert, write him an apology, and apologize to his face, and try to get rid of this so-called curse. And hope that it works. So after 100 years, Robert is still getting his karma on those who wrong him. Employees of the museum claim that Robert moves overnight and has the ability to make cameras malfunction all by themselves. And to even prove that to you guys, there were a few letters that were written for Robert the doll that I'm going to read to you guys today because I found them to be so incredibly crazy how bad that he can apparently curse people. So let me read this letter that I found online that somebody wrote in apology to Robert. So this was dated March of 2010. Dear Robert, I am so very sorry for not asking your permission to take your picture while visiting the museum last week. Since I have your picture without permission, many strange things have happened to me. While driving back from the Keys, a deer ran out in front of our car. We had to swerve, avoiding hitting it, and ran off the road. We also almost hit a tree. Two days later, we had a small kitchen fire, and we have been hearing childlike giggles coming from our basement. Last night, I was home all alone. I heard a voice coming from the basement. When I went to investigate, I tripped and fell down the three bottom stairs. I got up to run out, but the basement basement door was locked. My husband said that I probably turned the lock myself without even thinking about it and locked myself in the basement. But honestly, Robert, we both know the truth. Please accept my deepest apology for taking a picture without asking. Also, please accept my daughter's apology for sticking her tongue out at you and making fun of you. That is horrifying. If that all happened to that girl in coincidence, that would be some very strange coincidences. And apparently this has happened to a lot of people who went to see Robert, took his photo, and did not consent they've all had little curses put onto them, so don't do that. If you ever go visit Robert for some crazy coincidence, time to talk about our good friend Annabelle. And you guys might be wondering, well, is that what Annabelle really looks like? Yes! In the Conjuring movies and all the other movies made about Annabelle, she kind of looks more like this, but the real Annabelle actually looks exactly like this. Fun fact, I got this Annabelle from an antique store. They are Raggedy Ann dolls. Let's just hope she doesn't curse me. Nothing crazy has happened yet, at least I don't think with her. So I think we're good. I think we're just a couple of besties. You know what I'm saying, Annabelle? Please don't hurt me. <laughs> So the story to Annabelle goes like this. In 1970, a woman purchased a Raggedy Ann doll in a secondhand store as a Christmas present for her daughter Donna. Donna kept the doll on her bed. Everything seemed quite innocent until Donna brought Annabelle to the kitchen or breakfast table where the doll straightened out her arms and put them on the table. From there, things became weirder and weirder. Soon, Donna and her roommate Angie often came home to find Annabelle on the couch where she'd been left locked in Donna's room. There were nights where Annabelle would be seen standing on her own, kneeling, pivoting on one leg, levitating, and even making droplets of blood appear. Those are only a few of her so-called demonic gifts. Also, rumor has it that Annabelle would take parchment paper and write notes. After a month of Annabelle's eerie antics, Donna decided to contact a media. The psychic told Donna and Angie that a seven-year-old girl named Annabelle had been tragically slain on the apartment property. The child had taken the residence inside of Donna's doll that her mom gifted to her. Annabelle felt comfortable with Donna and Angie. The young nurse's already compassionate souls decided that there was no harm in welcoming Annabelle into their home. However, that that's where they were extremely wrong. Yeah, they thought maybe there was no harm about it, nothing was so bad about it, since they thought it was the soul of a little girl. Well, fun fact, it was a demon pretending to be a little girl. So things started going incredibly wrong in their house. Eventually, Donna's friend Lou got attacked by Annabelle. Lou woke up from a terrible nightmare feeling like she was choking. To this horror, Lou looked down to find Annabelle crawling up his leg. The next day, Lou was attacked by an unseen force that left seven distinct claw marks all over his chest. That is so, so creepy. So after this attack on Lou happened, Donna actually asked a priest for help. Eventually, Ed and Lorraine Warren came to investigate 
get the doll themselves as well. The Warrens actually soon came to a very disturbing conclusion. They also realized Donna's doll was not possessed by a ghost of a young girl, but a demon that had its sights set on Donna's soul. The Warrens called in a priest to perform an exorcism on Annabelle. Afterwards, Donna asked the Warrens to take the doll with them. And then now to this day, Annabelle has been locked up in a cage to never be touched or messed with. And Annabelle now resides in the Warrens Museum and has been there ever since. However, there are some really creepy facts about Annabelle that I didn't know and I'm sure that you guys have not heard about, so I want to share those with you guys because I find them very interesting. So Donna would treat the Annabelle doll like a little girl and in fact you can still see there's a bracelet on the doll's wrist to this day that nobody has ever tried to remove off the doll. Because who knows what would happen if they took Donna's bracelet off of the Annabelle doll. Obviously not something good because everybody who has tried to mess with the doll has pretty much died so it's just not worth the risk. Also one time a priest from Hartford once visited the Warren's home and threw the doll across the room proclaiming that God was more powerful than the devil. On his way back to the rectory, he got into a serious accident with a tractor trailer. The priest survived luckily, but he claimed to have seen the doll in his rearview mirror right before that crash happened. And luckily, he did not die in the wreck, but Annabelle was not happy about that because she is a demon. Lauren Warren also did not like staring at the doll because it had done a lot of bad harm to people as she claimed. Lauren once said that the evil attached to Annabelle needs a body to go into and won't stop until it gets a body to go into. So that's why no one messes with Annabelle and I actually wonder how long Annabelle will stay in her cage or if she will ever escape the cage. Anyways guys, let me know what you guys think. Do you think Annabelle and Robert the doll are the two most haunted dolls in the world? I think that they well deserve their spots at the most two haunted dolls in the world in my opinion and I personally would not want to come face to face with either of them. Anyways guys, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. It really does help the channel out a lot and if this video is to 20,000 likes, you guys already know the drill. I will make more videos like today's video. Also guys, be sure to leave a comment down below for a chance to win a shout out in the next video and hit the subscribe button so we can get closer to my goal of 3 million subscribers. It's been Lissy. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys!